so what we are going to learn in this chapter basically is all those parts of the brain uh, which is related with memory and if these parts uh, get damaged or if there is uh, any disease that affects these parts if there is any lesion uh, by lesion you can say uh, something like um, infection or something like that theek hai so if there is any infection if there is any damage if there is any disease that affects these parts uh, what will be the effect on memory in human beings okay this is what we are going to study today so before we study since uh, uh, i assume that majority of us here are not from science background uh, you might and also not from psychology background you might not uh, know all the parts of the brain okay so i would just request uh, swapnil ji to share few photos uh, that i had uh, sent him today and just just look at the photos just get a little feel of um, what are uh, you know various parts of the brain what is uh, what are lobes and again what is a hippocampus what is medial what is lateral etc so we we'll just i'll just explain um, uh, you know different parts of the brain okay so if you can see in this photo basically we have four kinds of lobes so you can understand lobes are basically like um, small small parts you can just say that your brain is divided into four lobes matlab four parts okay so <coughs> what are those sorry uh, frontal lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe and occipital lobe okay and each lobe has specialized functions so what are the specialized functions so if you see in the frontal lobe so it is about thinking planning and um, uh, you can say problem solving etc that will be your frontal lobe uh, then when you come to temporal lobe temporal lobe is related to memory it is related to language it is related to facial recognition speech even emotions okay that is uh, temporal lobe is related to that now when you go to parietal lobe it is related with uh, perception it is related with uh, uh, processing of information uh, knowledge of numbers object uh, classification etc and occipital lobe is related with vision and everything that is related to uh, visual processing of information okay is is this much okay for everybody i just want that uh, please look at the figure uh, please zoom in your screen and please look out, look at the figure for at least 2 to 3 minutes and try to understand which are the parts we are trying to uh, you know like understand in the human uh, brain okay so if you can see uh, so if i'll ask you a question like um frontal lobe uh, uh, frontal lobe uh, comes first or parietal lobe comes first so what would you say please look at the figure and say okay because uske baad i'll also explain few other things in the figure yes any frontal lobe frontal lobe frontal lobe comes acha theek as the so, name suggests frontal lobe ma'am i think so yes it is right अभी देखिए सबसे पीछे वाला जो लोब है दैट इज ऑसिपिटल लोब लेकिन इट इज रिलेटेड विद विजन व्हिच इज अगेन इन द फ्रंट ठीक है सो दिस इज वन थिंग ऑलवेज रिमेंबर बिकॉज मेनी टाइम्स पीपल फील दैट सिंस विजन इज द फर्स्ट थिंग एंड आल्सो अगर आप इफ यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द टॉप विजन इज समथिंग दैट कम्स फर्स्ट and vision is related to occipital so occipital lobe is in the front no always remember although vision comes first occipital lobe is at the back okay so first is frontal lobe then is parietal then is occipital then is uh, temporal if we are going in a uh, clockwise direction okay so uh, can i just uh, assume ki aap you can like understand from this figure where each of the lobe is placed is this okay uh, yes, uh, yes ma'am because i have taken a very very simplified version of the brain because uh, see i don't want to like you know overburden you with so many parts of the brain which is right now not necessary to learn for memory so just learn these four uh, uh, kinds of lobes aur usme just remember ki temporal lobe jo hai that is related directly to the memory theek hai is this okay yes ma'am abhi i will uh, dictate some terms please write it down because kabhi kabhi uh, you will come across these terms a lot in memory in emotions and um, in um, 
intelligence um also in biological basis of behavior so please write few words the number one word is anterior anterior a n t e r i o r anterior ma'am please once again i couldn't hear it maybe there is some okay okay i'll just see if i can access the chat and write it for you so it's anterior yeah anterior yes anterior then it's posterior medial lateral dorsal is it okay did we get all the words yes ma'am yes okay. तो ठीक है सबसे पहले जस्ट रिमेंबर एंटीरियर मींस फ्रंट ओके सामना वट एवर यू आर सीइंग इन फ्रंट लाइक सपोज देर इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट सपोज स्टिल नॉट बी क्लियर बट लेट मी जस्ट शो यू लाइक दिस सपोज दिस इज अ रिमोट तो दिस दिस इज एंटीरियर ओके दिस इज द फ्रंटल पोर्शन Um, your was, voice is breaking, ma'am. Voice is breaking. Whoever is facing, who is facing this? No, no, no. Voice is clear, ma'am. Okay, okay. I See, whoever is having uh, issues, uh, technical issues, kindly reconnect. Okay. All right. So, All right. Thank you. Yeah. This is uh, anterior. Uh, sorry. The, yes. This is anterior or the front, and anterior is also known as ventral. Okay. Now this is the posterior or the dorsal or the back. Just remember this. Then we have two more words called medial and lateral. What is medial? Medial is midpoint. Okay. So just look at the. Look, remember, I'll just give you a very um, to explain giving this example. Please look at the figure in your uh, screen. You can see the brain stem. A brain stem, they are showing, which is an orange color ka extension, a line like that. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So that is the medial. But that is the midpoint. If you draw the whole line, pura khinch lete ho, you will see it is almost uh, the middle of all uh, the entire photo. So whatever the midpoint is known as medial, or the midpoint is far, ekdam far, known as lateral. So let me just example. Uh, I'll just you just observe. Suppose uh, this uh, organ, this this part, this part will be the medial, okay? But we ask for the little bit. Why my voice isn't clear? There's lot of background noise. Uh, is there anybody else who is also mic is on? So Abhinav ji, kindly check. Yeah, sure. Uh, Let me check. In my, in my block, everybody is inside their houses <laughs> due to Corona, so hardly we'll have noises here. So uh, I'm. So there was a bathroom. So I'm putting everyone on uh, mute. Yeah. Huh. Huh. So Just I'm put putting everybody. Uh, everyone mute. Uh, so whenever you have a question, please unmute yourself, and then you can go back. Uh, go back to mute styles. Okay. That's the yes. request from us. Yes, that would be nice. Yes, <clears throat> yes. I'll just repeat what I was saying. See, suppose uh, this is a let's say this is a complete organ. Let's say so. These two two fingers are. This is the midpoint or medial. And these two two fingers are. That is my little fingers. These are the lateral. That means which is farther away from the midpoint. Is this okay? You can just write a yes or no in the chat so that I know that you understood. No need to mute and mute. Or just write yes, yes. I will understand. You understood this, right? So we have these yes. So we have these four to six terms that is very important that will keep on repeating. You know, in uh, these four five chapters. So at least these four five terms you should know. Okay. Now this is uh, one part. Okay. Now uh, just remember that if we have to study um, what all parts are important. What all parts of the brain 
are important in memory so for that we have three to four ways okay so the number one is brain damage so please write it down brain damage okay so one is brain damage second is disease related to brain disease related to brain Hmm. Third is um, lesion. Okay, lesion. L e s i o n lesion. Ha. Huh. And uh, fourth is uh, brain surgery. Brain surgery. Yes. Okay. Now um, <clears throat> we'll see uh, one more photo. Uh, uh, Swapnil ji, please put one more photo where we have hippocampus and all of those things. Yes, yes, I am working on. Just give me. Ah, this photo is also. Yes, yes, yes. No. Oh. Now, uh, see, in your brain, uh, there is a part known as hippocampus. Okay. So, hippocampus, and there is another part known as amygdala. We'll look at it later. So, you where the hippocampus lies. So, hippocampus ka one of the main uh, uh, you know, function is consolidation of memory. So what is consolidation of memory? Consolidation of memory ka matlab hai. <coughs> you have had uh, so many uh, small, small experiences or small, small, um, you can say you, you have seen or you have put so much information into your brain, into your long term memory. When it arranges itself into any structure or when you have uh, when you have made it into a reporter or maybe you can say into a complete set of bank of emotion bank of information that is known as consolidation of memory that means whatever you are learning you are learning it for a pretty longer period of time or whatever you have put in your memory that is for a pretty longer period of time where you will not easily forget it or you will be able to access it easily so that is known as consolidation of memory okay so hippocampus is one uh, part of the brain which is responsible for um, your uh, uh, this thing your consolidation of memory okay uh, before yeah. that huh um, can we say converting of memory information from short term to long term can be can it be called consolidation ma'am <laughs> consolidation only that is what exactly i'm saying <clears throat> that is exactly what I'm saying. yes Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, okay, sorry, what was I? I forgot. <laughs> amygdala, ma'am. Ah, amygdala. No, no, not amygdala. I was talking of something else. And hippocampus, part of the brain which consolidate the memory. Uh -huh. No, that was, I was about to say something. Achha. Okay, if I'll remember, I'll come back to that. So now, uh, please remember, ma there is something. Ma'am, here we were telling amygdala, hippocampus. Ma'am, can we call these were retrieval cues for a person? But the person no. was not retrieving, ma'am. No, these are parts of the brain. How can they be retrieval cues? No, no, not at all. These are no. parts. Ma'am, ma'am, you are not understanding. I'll say in Hindi, ma'am. Ma'am, abhi aap bhool gaye kya aapko batana tha. Fir hum aap bol rahe amygdala, hippocampus. Ma'am, ma'am, cha rahe ki aap thoda reproduce kare ki aapko kya bolna tha. Ma'am, to wo bane na retrieval cues, ma'am. Wohi pooch rahe the, ma'am. Cues, yes. But then retrieval cues are basically used for LTM. Uh, what I am trying to do now is working memory. So retrieval Or, cues will be helpful here. Yes. Sorry, yes. interrupt. Okay, no problem. Okay, Haan, Swapnil ji wanted to say something. Haan, Swapnil ji, please. Uh, Romana ji, so as discussed earlier, we will take a question at the end of class. Right? Achha, so, okay. Okay. okay, 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 no problem. Yes.
<coughs> okay. Now, uh, uh, fine. Next, we are next. Uh, yes, I, I remembered what I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about um, amnesia, memory loss, which temporarily happened to me right now. So uh, we are talking about amnesia now. So uh, uh, A M N E S I A. I hope uh, all those who are absolutely new to this word, please write it down. A M N E S I A. Amnesia. Now, amnesia is something which you uh, have seen in films like Gajni or um, in some very old films also, where you know, like let's say, koi hero hai and then you know, uh, usko koi maart, hai and then he, wait, then he falls into the river, let's say, and then he, uh, um, paan, char, paan din baad, he is found in another village and unko kuch bhi yaad nahi hai, main kaun hu, main kaha hu. So that is basically amnesia. Abhi amnesia again is of two types, okay? So first one is known as retrograde amnesia and uh, second one is known as anterograde amnesia, okay? Uh, I'll just write it down. I'll just write the spelling for you. Yes, retrograde. Retrograde. And anterograde. Okay, so now let me explain what is retrograde amnesia and what is anterograde. So as you can understand, the, the term retro basically means old. Especially in these music channels, they will say we are playing a retro number. Okay, so retro number basically means, uh, let's say, uh, some songs from 1970, 1980, which is quite old compared to today. Okay, that is retro. So retro ka matlab hai old. So what happens in retrograde amnesia is, like let me give you an example. Suppose uh, there is a person, person A, um, who had an accident on 1st January 2021. Uh, so accident was on 2021, 1st January. He recovers or maybe let's say uske baad he went into coma and then he recovers uh, on 5th January 2021. He opens his eyes and suddenly he feels usko apne life ka bahut sara cheez ab yaad nahi hai. It need not be total wipeout of everything of the last 20-25 years, Vesa nahi. But let's say he does not remember um, anything from uh, 2015 till 1 January 2021. So that will be known as retrograde amnesia. You are not able to, uh, you know, like remember all your past experiences or what 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 you had done in the past, okay? Uh, especially last four, five years, okay? Not very old, but last four, five years. Now, now that is known as retrograde amnesia. Now, what is anterograde amnesia? Anterograde amnesia is a condition where new memories are um, uh, not, uh, where you are not able to, huh, yes, form new memories, okay? Uh, you're not able to form new memories. Just one moment. I just got just one moment. Just one moment. I'll just be back. Uh, so meanwhile, you can also look at Give me a minute. Uh, yes, I'm so sorry. I just got somebody on the door. There's nobody else apart from me to open it. So, yes. Uh, so, uh, anterograde amnesia is that no new memories are formed. Okay. Um, Let's say the person woke up on 5th January 2021 and after 5th January 2021 he is unable to form any new memories or he does not even remember whatever he is doing at the moment. Okay, like whatever he is doing at the moment also, he has no knowledge of it. Now, this is very, very dangerous because uh, there are some people, especially who suffer from anterograde amnesia, they will read a book, but they will immediately forget what they have read. They'll meet a person, but they will not know that um, 
uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, they, they have just met the person. OK, now let me like just tell you just uh, one um, example. Um, <clears throat> um, I do not remember any movies right now, but uh, just uh, imagine this way that uh, there is a person. Uh, I had met one person with anterograde amnesia while I was doing my internship uh, during my university days. And it was very, very, uh, it was very, very uh, strange because uh, he he was in his uh, house. Uh, and when I went to meet him, I knocked the door. And since his all his children used to stay uh, abroad, uh, so he had a small a little peephole where he could see. So he opened and from the peephole he looked and he asked me, OK, who are you? So I told he I have come and I want to talk to you uh, and uh, you know, movie black retrograde. Sorry, I've not seen movie black, but yes, could be OK. <laughs> so I just I, I just told that uncle that uncle I have come to talk to you. Please open the door. So he was first little suspicious Then he told OK. Uh, OK, OK, I'll open you come. So I think the distance from the peephole till the door was probably 10 seconds or something. He would tell that he would close the peephole. Then again, there would be no response. Again, when I would knock again, he would look and he would again ask me, who are you? Why have you come? And this went on for eight to 10 times. And it was very, very tough for me to actually convince him to open the door because he just didn't remember the moment he closed the peep door and the peephole and uh, uh, I could not even meet him or I could not even enter the house. So um, as you know, so this is one thing that happens in anterograde amnesia and it is very, very, um, very sad for the person who goes through it. OK, so we will be uh, in this uh, in, in our material. Also, we will study about two people. One person's name is HM. His name uh, he has his name has been abbreviated as HM. OK, since you know in medical uh, line or in medical practice, they basically don't give out the names of the patient who are suffering from any serious disorders. OK, uh, so they have named it named him as HM and uh, we will study the case study of HM now. OK, so uh, what happened to HM was HM was a person who used to suffer from epilepsy. So does everybody know what is epilepsy? Uh, just write yes or no so that I will know. Does everybody know what is epilepsy? Paralysis. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, body paralysis. No, 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 no. Acha. Okay, I'll just tell uh, what is epilepsy. You see, in epilepsy, uh, in epilepsy, what happens is that uh, while you are walking, sometimes while you are sleeping, while you are talking, your uh, 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 suddenly you will begin to have very jerky movements okay like manli ji you are holding the pen and talking normally suddenly your hand will start clamping like this and uh, unknowingly you will put the pen down and then sometimes you may fall down okay so why this happens there are many reasons but one of the reasons is so we'll have neural and electrical impulses in our brain sometimes since this goes very uh, smoothly in epileptic patients what happens these electrical uh, uh, charges they don't go very smoothly and they sometimes go out in burst matlab jaisa man lije if it is moving at let's say i'm just giving an example let's say if it is going at going at like 10 impulses per second it will suddenly go as in 50 impulse per second so obviously the person will be totally shaken up, will uh, be injured. So बहुत बार ऐसा होता है जिन लोगों को epilepsy होता है, वो चलते-चलते रास्ते पे गिर जाते हैं. Many a times उनका जो uh, tongue होता है, you know that comes between their teeth. Their tongue is cut off sometimes. They have serious, you know, when they fall down, they have uh, some, uh, uh, you know, like they'll have bruises and they will have इसे सर फूट गया किसी का. And uh, sometimes also while riding uh, uh, scooter or you know while riding or driving also they can you know uh, go to uh, they can uh, face accidents okay so epileptic attacks are very very dangerous and it is uh, um, almost not curable you can say it is still not curable yes what what can happen is the severity and duration will go down as a manly some people might have epileptic attacks every week uh, some people may have three four days maybe and some people might have it in once in two three months 
ओके तो ये ऐसे क्योरेबल नहीं है बट इट इज अ वेरी डेंजरस थिंग आई हैव सीन इट माई सेल्फ आई यूज टू हैव वन ऑफ माई नेबर हुज चाइल्ड यूज टू हैव इट एंड वी यूज टू फील वेरी सैड फॉर हर बिकॉज शी यूज टू सिट शी यूज टू बी शी यूज टू वेल वी यूज टू and nobody nobody knew what happened to her okay and why did she fall down or something so th- there was a person known as hm uh, who also had this okay unko bhi aise epileptic attacks ho rahe the and then those epileptic attacks became very very frequent so frequent you can say jaise pehle ek do hafte mein ek bar hota tha ya ek month mein ek bar hota tha then it started having uh, then he started getting it every week so he was very very um, he was very um, much upset about it and uh, he did not know what to do and this is uh, uh, this thing uh, this entire case is somewhere of the 50s 1950 1960s to us time itne advanced medicines bhi nahi the so he he visited a doctor and the doctor suggested that what we can do is jahan pe epileptic uh, attack jo hai जो आपको जो सीजर्स आ रहे थे व्हाट इज सीजर्स इज बेसिकली दोस जर्किंग मूवमेंट्स जैसे आप कभी कभी आप देखोगे ना इफ यू यू सी सम ओल्ड पीपल आल्सो एंड सम नॉट वेरी ओल्ड पीपल आल्सो वो कभी भी कोई चीज पकड़ लेते हैं उनका हाथ ऐसे कांपता रहता है तो दैट इज नोन एज सीजर्स ओके सो Uh, what happened is that uh, this person uh, he visited the doctor hm visited the doctor or doctor ne kaha ki we can do one thing uh, your epileptic seizures jo hain they are basically originating from the temporal lobe so what we can do is we can remove a portion of the temporal lobe so what will happen is all your aapka jo bhi seizures wagera hai uh, wo sab khatam ho jayega and it you will feel uh, much relief so since that was one of the um just recently out treatment that time so hm agreed and then uh, this uh, thing was done this uh, surgery was done so after this uh, what happened is that uh, after the surgery was done the surgery was a success uh, all the epileptic seizures jo the wo to band ho gaye wo nahi hue lekin hm started to get uh some new issues what were what was that he started developing anterograde uh, uh, amnesia okay sorry swapnil ji who's guest here any issues uh, no no i just uh, wanted to know uh, who wanted to know uh, who who has uh-huh. connected using guest at uh, guest link uh, please use your actual name so we uh, we know who who is uh, uh, there on the class okay right. please always use your name while connecting right so yes uh, so what happened uh, although his uh, epileptic seizures and everything uh, was okay wo cure ho gaya but he uh, suffered from something uh, a different issue what was that see as we talked in the uh, beginning of the lecture i showed you four lobes so temporal lobe was the one jis pe surgery kiya gaya tha temporal uh, temporal lobe was the one which was related to memory so seizures to khatam ho gaye lekin hm started suffering from anterograde amnesia so what happened after the surgery he suffered from severe anterograde and little bit of retrograde so little bit of retrograde mein kaise jis din surgery hua uske previous 4 5 saal ke jo tha jo ye tha jo information tha memory tha that suffered aur koi bhi naya memory form nahi hua okay so what happened what was the issue now so whoever came to visit him he never remembered he he read a book he didn't remember he didn't know what was happening so although he was saved from one but he gathered something different okay he gathered a new uh, uh, new issue now apart from that the doctor told that apart from memory everything else was okay his intelligence level was okay his personality didn't uh, undergo any major change everything else was okay but his memory and jo bhi uh, uh, formation of new memory that was hampered okay so and that is what was about uh, hm okay um yes and the last one that he suffered a lot was the transfer of information from short term memory to long term memory was highly dis- disrupted okay obviously it will happen because now he can't form new memory how can he will not form new memory that means information is, cannot go to the long term memory right so this is what happened okay now uh, next we come to something known as 
<clears throat> um, uh, another person, uh, uh, we have another case study. Uh, his uh, name again is. Basically, huh, yes, yes, that's right. Yes. So now next uh, we come to another uh, case study that is known as RB again, just like HM, it was RB. OK, so he uh, lost his memory to uh, an ischemic episode. What is ischemic episode? Uh, agar aapke brain mein blood ka flow kam ho jaye, so you suffer from a disease known as ischemia. So he suffered from this ischemic episode. Ischemic episode matlab at one point in time, this reduction of uh, blood happened to his uh, brain during a bypass surgery. OK, so he also develops the uh, dense anterior amnesia. He could not form uh, new memories and also uh, Joby from the day of uh, <clears throat> his surgery uh, till two to three years back, he could not even remember anything. So he had retrograde, but uh, anterograde was more severe. OK, so uh, what uh, when they when uh, when uh, people started actually observing the temporal lobe mein surgery kiya gaya ya temporal lobe mein kuch issue hua. So it what part of brain or what part of temporal lobe uh, was damaged or was affected. This ke wajhe se this uh, this entire uh, you know anterograde amnesia came about. So in both the cases of RB and also of HM, they found that it is the hippocampus that was damaged or the surgery done in hippocampus that leads to this issue. So from there they understood that hippocampus is the um, organ or hippocampus is the part of the brain that helps in the consolidation of memory. Okay, so is this understood till here? Did everybody understand since it is a little uh, uh, it is not very um, you can say it is uh, it, it's a little scientific as well because you have to remember a lot and you have to see look at each part. So is this OK? Is this understood by everybody? Kindly just uh, write a yes or no so that I can get a feedback. <coughs> Yes, it does not store anything. Yes, it is just it just works as a working memory. If you are reading, you are just reading. You are making sense of the things, but you cannot uh, store anything for the future. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, apart from this, uh, now we have few syndromes. OK, a uh, few syndromes and uh, uh, in that syndrome we will learn uh, something known as the Korsakoff syndrome. OK, uh, I, I'll just uh, ask Swapnil ji, please put the photo of diencephalon. <coughs> diencephalon, Swapnil ji. Uh, give me a minute to find that image. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. yes, so all can see this is a photo of the diencephalon. Diencephalon is again one part of the brain you can see which consists of uh, thalamus, cerebellum and the hypothalamus. OK, <clears throat> so I think uh, um, although you will take some time to remember all the functions but I can just tell you a little bit hypothalamus is again. Uh, it's very, very important part of the brain that is like um, associated with almost every activity you can say right from thirst, hunger control to you can say, um, um, you know, like uh, any small decision making anything. Hypothalamus is very, very important. It's also there in fear in emotion. So hypothalamus is very important. So <clears throat> there is something known as diencephalic amnesia. So what is diencephalic amnesia? So two syndrome. One is um, alcoholic Korsakoff syndrome and diencephalic amnesia. Uh, sorry, one syndrome and one amnesia. So what happens is uh, all those people uh, who drink a lot, OK, who are uh, alcoholics or who uh, 
जो लोग बहुत ज्यादा अल्कोहल लेते हैं दे सफर फ्रॉम दिस ओके दैट डायन सेफेलॉन इज बेसिकली अफेक्टेड एंड दैट इज वाई दे ऑल्सो सफर फ्रॉम अमनेशिया सो अमनेशिया हेयर बेसिकली मीन्स यू आर अनेबल टू रिमेंबर थिंग्स Now see, there is one more thing. I would just want everybody to write down. Uh, just write a word, <coughs> uh, three words: medial temporal lobe. Medial temporal lobe. <coughs> hmm. Medial temporal lobe. <coughs> yes so medial temporal lobe is basically responsible <clears throat> for formation of uh, new memories okay whereas hippocampus is uh, uh, responsible for consolidation of these memories okay uh, also uh, since uh, sometimes it happens uh, many a times actually uh, okay what does the word syndrome mean okay see syndrome uh, basically is you will have a lot of symptoms jaise aap bahut sare symptoms dekhenge when you combine those symptoms and you arrive that these uh, uh, number of symptoms give rise to a certain type of a disease that is known as syndrome now why is it not known as a disease but a syndrome because again in some let's say majority of the people would show those symptoms but there would be also a small minority that may not show all those symptoms okay so it is not told a disease because a disease uh, will have at least 95% people showing the same symptoms syndrome will have let's say 70 75% showing majority of the similar symptoms but again different different as well so it is just like uh, <clears throat> you can say um, it is easy to recognize uh, basing on the symptoms but it is not shared by everyone in the sample okay so that is why it is a syndrome <clears throat> okay yes so uh, hippocamp uh, yes i told what i told is uh, uh, temporal lobe is again responsible for your uh, new memories formation of new memories and uh, uh, hippocampus is for consolidation of uh, memories okay <clears throat> yes now um, we'll just uh, talk to just you can just write two you just can write one line uh, damage to midline structure damage to midline structure of the diencephalon yes of the brain causes amnesia <clears throat> okay okay uh, now after this uh, we'll try to learn four to five different kinds of memory okay uh, so first uh, <clears throat> please write autobiographical memory autobiographical memory then episodic memory ha huh. episodic memory semantic memory semantic memory uh procedural memory okay these four is uh, this this four are only important other you will have so many iconic memory this memory that memory not important these four are the most important ones that generally you will get questions on okay so first is what is autobiographical memory see autobiographical memory is anything that you have experienced uh, personally and 
whenever you want to uh, bring it to your consciousness or whenever you have whenever you are trying to retrieve it you can actually feel the emotion with that memory okay now let me give you an example <clears throat> suppose in standard 10 um, during uh, your uh, examination the last exam of your uh, board examination let's say uh, an actor let's say sharukh khan or salman khan had come to your school or the center where you were giving your exam and uh, he came directly and stood in the next to the bench where you were giving the exam and he put his hand on your back and asked you how are you doing i hope you have you are able to answer all the questions now even if you remember and obviously you must have felt very happy now even even if you remember this uh, event many years later you can still feel that feeling that you felt when this had actually happened so this is autobiographical what you have experienced it a uh, first hand and personally okay this is autobiographical uh, what is episodic now many people get very confused with episodic and autobiographical episodic is in all these memories that you have in all your autobiographical memories or not autobiographical memories also <clears throat> there are certain episodes uh, uh, that have occurred okay let's say what is the episode your entire school life from standard 6 to standard 8 that is an episodic memory okay agar if you are taking it to be a very large let's say all those uh, exams of standard 6 where you had scored more than 80% okay the memories of those are episodic memory now what is the major difference between episodic and autobiographical are <clears throat> episodic memory uh, somebody may also tell you something and that might form as an episodic memory in your mind you may not have you may not remember having experienced it so as i was telling in one class let's say you are you had gone to a party and uh, somebody told that uh, somebody asked you to have a drink so generally you don't have a drink but everybody forced you ki nahi yaar you must have you must have so what you did is you had a drink and then uske uh, baad you don't exactly remember kya hua and agle din everybody uh, jab aap so ke uthe everybody was telling you that tumne drink karke bahut zyada sabko pareshan kiya you uh, you abused the boss and then you uh, told this thing to that person ye wo etc ab and you you saw that almost everybody is agreeing to that story ki ha yaar tumne to aisa kiya hi hai ha tumne tum to dant rahe the maine to suna hai now see you have no first hand memory of it so it is not an autobiographical memory but since so many people have told you whenever you remember about drinking you will remember that as an episode that has happened to you right so that is the difference between autobiographical memory and uh, episodic memory okay now next going to uh, semantic memory what is semantic memory semantic memory is um it is a collection of facts basically okay so you have a lot of facts and then you try to put them all in your memory some random facts also uh, let me just uh, like let's say uh, uh, one kind of random fact will be uh, let's say um <clears throat> janta curfew started or it happened on 23rd march 2020 now this is a very factual thing and it is a random fact right now but let's say you are writing a complete essay and you are trying to uh, yes capital of countries absolutely now let's say you are trying to uh, write you know uh, your entire experience of uh, um, what what you did on janta curfew that would be an autobiographical memory but just random facts like these these places were affected and hence uh, janta curfew was uh, you know uh, was evoked in um, uh, certain parts of india or let's say entire india on this date so that would be a semantic memory now coming to what is procedural memory so procedural memory is basically uh, memory of all the events and processes let's say learning how to ride a bicycle or um, uh, learning how to drive these are basically processes or tying your shoelaces these are all processes so procedural memory uh, ka jo duration hai that is life long you hardly forget something that you had learned or even if with a little bit of cue you can still recollect now uh, i i uh, 
uh, doubt if you have learned how to ride a bicycle you will ever forget you will never forget if you are given a bicycle you might just you know uh, lose your balance let's say for 5 to 10 seconds in the beginning but once you start riding you will never fall off okay so that is procedural um, uh, <clears throat> uh, memory that lasts very very long okay that that does not um, you know you never forget it you it, it might just you know get little weakened uh, especially uh, i do not know if everybody knows this um, it is called uh, forgetting uh, this japanese uh, paper uh, folding craft i am forgetting what it is known as by origami origami right so origami so uh, origami what happens origami mein jaise bachpan mein we had remembered how to you know like uh, kis tarah se wo banate hain na boat banate hain aur sab uh, barish ke time pe you know we uh, play with it and all so agar aapne wo banana sikha you will not forget it easily but Uh, ho sakta hai after many many years when somebody tells you to do it you may be a little hesitant in the beginning because you will not able to remember it ekdam se but if somebody just gives you a cue ki ha just hold the paper like this aap ek do step karoge and it will come come back to you very easily okay so procedural memory is something that is very very um, less resistant to change and it lasts for a very very long time okay so these are the four types of memory that we need to remember yes driving a car and set of actions uh if there is any questions with whatever i had i taught today uh, you may just ask in the group uh, and we'll uh, take it <clears throat>